Today, I want to answer a burning question that I've seen tons of times over. Tom, what is the share price of AMC going to be after the reverse split? Is it going to be $20, $40, $60 or even higher? And importantly, how is this going to impact the mother of all short squeezes? And what kind of impact is it also going to have on the wider market as well? Well, stay tuned and let's make some money. And now I'm going to dive straight in with the key information. So, as you can see, I've got two separate scenarios here. Scenario number one is what would typically happen during a usual reverse split or during a business combination. And scenario two is apparently exactly what's going to happen from John Merriweather from the Investor Relations Department. Now, there is a slight difference between scenario one and scenario two, which does have a slight impact on the price as well. But I also want to talk about the tons of different variables that could also impact the true conversion price. So let's start off with scenario number one. This takes the total number of shares in AMC and the total number of shares in APE as well and compares that to the market cap for AMC and the market cap for APE and effectively creates a hybrid of the two. So with AMC, we know we have a float of 516 million shares. With APE, on the other hand, we have a float of 930 million. Now that was actually confirmed by the AMC reverse split documentation that talks about the APE shares having 929.8 million issued shares. That means that post-conversion, aka when APE converts into AMC, will have a total of 1.4 billion AMC shares. Then after the 10 for 1 reverse split, we'll have 144 million shares in total. Now we also need to look at the market caps for AMC and for APE. For AMC, we know that it has a market cap right now today of $3.11 billion. Now APE on the other hand is a little bit funny, there's tons of different sources that have tons of different market caps as well. Some sources have the APE market cap at around $3 billion, but some sources have it as high as $5 billion. Basically what will happen is during the conversion the AMC and APE shares combine and the AMC and APE market caps combine as well, so we'll have a total final market cap of somewhere between $6 to $8 billion. Now, if you take that market cap of six to eight billion dollars, divide it by $144 per share, you get a post AMC conversion and reverse split price between $42 and $56 per share. Now, let's also talk through scenario two and speak about how scenario two differs from scenario one. Well, Peter Hannes tweeted saying that John Merriweather from AMC has said in the event of a yes vote and the judge ruling the conversion can go ahead, the price of APE will go to where AMC was last trading at. And he confirmed saying, so yes, at current prices, it's a large gain for APE. Effectively, APE disappears and an AMC share is issued for every single APE share at the current AMC price. Now that effectively means that we have 516 million AMC shares at $6 per share today. We'll have 930 million APE shares that right now are trading at $1.76, but will be trading at $6 on the conversion day. Basically meaning we'll have 1.44 billion shares of AMC at $6 per share, or after the reverse split, 144 million at $60 exactly. So you can see under John Merriweather's scenario, the price for AMC after the conversion and reverse split is actually higher. It's not between $42 and $56, it's all the way above $60 per share. But now let's also talk through all of these different variables that could impact the price of AMC post conversion and reverse split. Now the first and most obvious one is the current price of AMC today isn't necessarily going to be the exact price of AMC on conversion day. Right now AMC has a market cap of $3 billion and a share price of $6 per share. But obviously there's nothing that stops a run up in the AMC price between now and that conversion day. AMC could convert $6, it could convert $10, $20, $30, $60 or even higher. There's no guaranteeing exactly what the AMC price is going to be on the reverse split day. Obviously and importantly we could even squeeze before the reverse split and we could end up reverse splitting during the squeeze causing the price of AMC to rocket. Instead of AMC converting from $6 to $60, it could be converting from $60 to $600 or from $600 to $6,000. Now the second variable is the current APE market cap. Obviously, as I said, there's a number of different sources trying to pin the APE market cap between $3 and $5 billion, but nobody really knows for sure exactly what the true market cap of APE actually is. 
and therefore it's obviously difficult to tell exactly what the market cap of AMC combined will be during that reverse split day. It could be between six and eight billion dollars. It could be 10 billion, 15 billion, 20 billion, even higher. Nobody actually knows. And therefore it's difficult to figure out an exact AMC post reverse split price based on today's data, because obviously the data is going to change before the reverse split. And I think the final variable is that we don't know exactly which scenario the AMC reverse split is going to follow. Is it going to follow scenario two or is it going to follow scenario one? And well, actually, the largest variable of all is exactly how the market reacts to the reverse split price, exactly what traders are doing on the trading day and exactly what happens whether they buy more shares or try and illegally short more shares. On the actual day of the reverse split, it may open at $60, but may rock it up and may end up squeezing all the way to 100, 200, 500, 1000 or even higher per share. Alternatively, the shorts could try and push down the price of AMC. But I do think it's important to remember that whether the price is $60 or $6, it's just as easy for the shorts to push the price down. The shorts can easily push the price down from $60 down to $5, as they can push it down from $6 down to 50 cents per share. I think all in all, it's important to remember the market cap of AMC isn't going to be changing during the squeeze. It's only going to be the number of shares that are reducing in total. You're still going to be holding the same portion of AMC. Retail investors as a whole are going to be holding the same portion. It just means that your shares are going to be worth more money. And that's why I also want to talk about why the lawsuit filed by the Aligini Country Employees Retirement System in February is likely a stall tactic. As Billy tweeted, he said, as stated by multiple analysts, including Wedbush's own Alicia Reese, the Court of Chancery would likely side with AMC if the majority of the shareholders voted for the proposals. Basically saying that if the majority of AMC investors vote for the conversion, it's likely the courts will throw out this frivolous lawsuit. But obviously, if the majority of shareholders voted against the proposal, the judgment wouldn't really matter either way because the reverse split wouldn't be going ahead. Obviously, the reverse split vote is going to be released on March 14th, but AMC as a company may not be able to do anything regarding the vote until the lawsuit is thrown out as frivolous. But obviously, if 90% of shareholders vote for the conversion, then clearly the Aligeni Country Employees Retirement System has no idea what they're talking about because the majority of investors clearly want the reverse split to go ahead and the lawsuit will be thrown out as frivolous. But obviously on the flip side, if 90% of investors vote against the reverse split, then the reverse split won't be happening either way. Therefore, again, no need for the lawsuit. But as Billy tweeted, he said, so what do you actually get? And how are Allegheny actually benefiting from this lawsuit? Well, he said, obviously, they get extra time to make extremely high interest rates on their stock loans. Aligeni are obviously lending out their shares to short sellers and they want to benefit from these high interest rates even longer and therefore they want to delay this conversion and reverse split. They likely don't really care which way the reverse split goes, they just want more time to continue lending out their shares and trying to make a little bit more money. Now finally, I also want to quickly touch on what's currently going on in the wider market and what Jerome Powell said today and how it's going to impact the wider market as a whole. Jerome Powell said that interest rates are likely going higher than previously thought, which has obviously spurred on more fear in the wider market. Now on top of that, to again add to that level of fear, Meta or Facebook have also announced plans to cut thousands more employees as soon as this week. You may remember Meta or Facebook has already laid off over 10,000 employees, and it seems that another round of layoffs is yet again approaching this week. And finally, to again add to that fear, we've had a massive announcement from JP Morgan that could potentially spell the end for the stock market. JP Morgan are effectively estimating that a market shock of 1% to 5% would be amplified by those zero days to expiry call options. Basically, if the S&P 500 was going to fall between 1% and 5%, the zero days to expiry options would cause a delta unwind of $7 to $14 billion, which would translate into a total down day of 4% to 8% in the S&P 500 in one singular day. But in the worst case scenario, if the S&P 500 was going to have a 5% down day with the massive, massive delta unwind, which could be costing as much as $30 billion, that could lead to a 20% S&P 500 crash in one singular day. 
basically saying because of the massive compounding we're currently seeing in these zero days to expiry call options, instead of seeing a three or four percent down day, we could see 20% loss from the S&P 500 in one singular day. This is obviously something I first hypothesized a few months ago and last year as well, and it's now just been confirmed as possible by JP Morgan. Basically saying if we do have a very bad day in the S&P 500, it would be amplified massively with the giant expirations of those call options that would be expiring on that same day, again causing massive panic and a massive, massive crash. But guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, guys, be sure to ding that notification bell because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.